Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here today to do a long overdue reading update. Um, I believe the last one I did was back in the summer, so I am just going to tell you about what I've read over the last month, month and a half or so. And there's quite a few books, so I'm just going to get started. And the first book I want to mention is one that I have the physical copy of it, but I am too lazy to go upstairs and bring it down here. And that is Jemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So the first book in the series, Illuminae, was my absolute favorite book of 2015. It's on my favorite shelf, and I pretty much raved about it and spent a lot of time raving about it on my channel. So to say that Jemina, and by the way, I'm hoping that that's how you pronounce it, to say that Jemina was my most anticipated read of 2016 would be an understatement. I could not wait to get my hands on it. I pre-ordered it the day it went on sale on Amazon, and I have to say I was not disappointed at all. It was amazing. Jay and Amy rocked it and it's just absolutely amazing. And it, if you guys don't know, you need to read Illuminate first of all, but it takes place on a spaceship and the whole structure of the book is very unique. It's told primarily through like emails and letters and um, chats and transcriptions of video surveillance. It's just, and there's all this artwork and it's just, it's beautiful. It's like a piece of art more than it's a book. And, um, once again, it's on my favorites list of 2016, and in my all-time favorite shelf, and on my six-star books on Goodreads. So, two thumbs up. Next up, I want to talk about a book that, up until almost the very end, I assumed would also be on my favorites of 2016 list, but sadly, it's not. And that is Head Full of Ghost by Paul Tremblay. Um, I don't remember being more disappointed and more frustrated and more angry by a book, probably since I read Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Um, so Head Full of Ghosts is about a family. They're struggling as far as, you know, paying their bills and everything. And to add insult to injury, one of their daughters is having some kind of mental breakdown. Their father is very, very religious and immediately assumes that this, the daughter is possessed by the devil. And I'm not going to tell you too much else about the plot because I don't want to really give it away, but they end up being part of this reality show documenting this exorcism that is supposed to be happening to their daughter. Now, the first, I would say about 65 to 70% of this book, I was totally on board. I thought it was amazing. There were genuinely genuinely creepy moments in this book. Around the halfway part, I kind of got the inkling that this story might be going in a direction that I was not going to be happy with towards the last part of the book. Uh, my disillusionment turned to anger with what they ended up doing with the story and the characters, and it turned in, you know, it went from being this really amazing story um, really intelligent and smart and unsettling to being this sort of cliched mess. But I was really angry and it went from being a five-star book to being a two-star book simply because of how they handled the ending and, and the supposed twist that they did at the end. Next up is a book that I've already done a full review for on my channel so I'm not going to say too much about it and it is The Devil of Nan King by Mo Hader. Um, while I made this video very, very close to when I finished this book, I was sort of struggling with whether or not this was my new favorite book of all time. And now that it's been a few weeks since I finished reading it, and the fact that it's still, the story is still in my head and I am still thinking about these characters, then yes, this book is without a doubt my favorite book of all time. Um, it is not for everyone, as I've stated in my review. There are certain things that might trigger people when reading this book. Um, and, but that can be said for a lot of Mo Hader's books. She deals with some very dark, controversial, um, uh, um, uncomfortable topics. But this book was amazing. It is, as I said, my all-time favorite book now. It is, of course, on my favorite shelf and a six-star re six read for me. Yeah. Next up, I read Cadillac Beach by Tim Dorsey. This is book six in, her, in his Surge Storms series, which is the series that is responsible for getting me excited to read again. Um, I, yeah, I went through a really, 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 really long period of not being able to read or concentrate on anything, and I picked up two books in this series when I was at the grocery store, and I read those two books so fast, and it sort of kick-started my love of reading all over again, and unfortunately this was not my favorite book in the series, 
Uh, maybe, possibly, it has something to do with the fact that I read seven books by Tim Dorsey in a very short period of time. That might have something to do with it. I didn't hate it. I still gave it three and a half stars, but that is, it is my least favorite book of the series that I've seen, that I've read so far. But I still love Surge. I still love the series. I love Tim Dorsey, and Surge is still my favorite character in fiction. I have started listening to audiobooks while I'm at work because I do a lot of um, computer and, like, I'm sitting at my desk a lot. So I, and I go in a lot earlier than most of the other people at work. So I have started to listen to audiobooks. So the first three that I listened to um, were all Sherlock Holmes stories. And the first one was A Study in Scarlet, and then Sign of the Four, and then I finished The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes this past week. And I enjoyed all of them. They're very easy to listen to. Um, I like the narrator which is always a plus because part of the reason why I don't listen to audiobooks that much is because it's very hard to find a narrator that I actually like. Next up, I read Birdman by Mo Hader. This is the first book in her Jack Caffrey, D.I. Jack Caffrey series. I believe there's seven books in the series right now. This series is completely different than The Devil of Nanking, which I knew going into this that, that the rest of her books were nothing at all like The Devil of Nanking. So I was kind of hesitant thinking that I might not like it, but I ended up really liking it. Once I got about 50 pages in and my brain was able to process that this was in fact the same person who wrote The Devil of Nanking, um, I was able to appreciate that this book was brilliant, just in a different way. Um, was it as good as The Devil of Nanking? No, but it still was enjoyable and interesting and had the distinct Mo Hater stamp on it, very, very, very flawed characters dark storyline, controversial subject matter. Um, so this is about a police detective um, who has a lot of demons in his own life. His brother went missing when he was a little boy, and he is obsessed thinking that um, his neighbor kidnapped and killed his brother. So he actually lives in his family house. He bought it from his parents so he can sit and spy on his neighbor and see if he can get any clues to lead to what happened to his brother. And then in his professional life, he is dealing with a case that is very strange where these women were found um, pretty much mutilated and um, they found little finch birds, hence the title and hence the dead bird on the cover, sewn inside the, ca the chest cavities of these women. And they were sewn inside the chest cavities while the birds were still alive. And this book was Excellent. Like I said, once I got past the first 50 pages or so, um, I really got into the story. I really like Jack as a character, and um, I am very excited to read more in the series, and I gave this one five stars. Next up is another audiobook that I listened to at work, and it is Hard Magic by L Lori, Larry Correa. It takes place in sort of like an alternate version of the 1930s, where there's this group of people who are sort of they take care of uh, magical sort of problems. They deal with monsters and stuff like that. And um, so it's kind of like uh, a hard-boiled, old-fashioned kind of detective story mixed with adventure. And um, there's all these characters and everything like that. And it's really well done. It's very, very long, <laughs> very long, but it's really well done. And I loved the narration, which was done by Bronson Pinchot. Um, he's actually one of my favorite narrators for audiobooks because he always does these really unique um, voices for each character so you can differentiate who's talking it, you know, especially, which is important, especially in a book like this one that has a lot of dialogue. So I really liked it. I gave it four and a half stars, and um, I just started the second book in the series, which is called Spellbound. Next up is a book that I just finished yesterday, and it is Pig Island by Mo Hader. Are you sort of sensing a trend with me lately as far as what I've been reading? Yeah. Um, this is another one of her standalone books. She's written three standalones, and I've read two of them so far. And this one, um, it's different. <laughs> I didn't hate it, but um, it's, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. And I was, I will admit, a little bit disappointed with the way that it ended. But it tells the story of this journalist who goes to this little island off the coast of Scotland 
and uh, a video has appeared online of what appears to be half man, half monster sort of scurrying across the beach. And he has gone to this island to sort of debunk the fact that people are thinking that it's a devil um, or some kind of like hideous creature with a tail. And I can't really say too much else about it because I don't want to give it away, but the story is really interesting and I would say for the first 80% of it, I was really, really invested in the story. I really liked the characters. And again, kind of like with um, Head Full of Ghosts, there were some genuinely creepy moments in this book. But I did have some problems with the story. I thought it, the story was too long overall. I thought they dragged it out a little bit too much. And the surprise ending wasn't really a surprise. Not only that, but it kind of didn't make sense in a certain way. Um, there was a little bit of a plot hole element towards the end of the book. But overall, I still enjoyed the book. It took me a long time to read it because I've been working so much, but I did give it three and a half stars on Goodreads. And finally, the last book that I've read, um, I actually just read it last night and finished the last few pages this morning, and it is After Dark by Haruki Murakami. Um, this book is tiny. It's less. It's like 200 pages long. So I pretty much read it in one sitting, except for the last few pages, which I finished this morning. And it takes place over the course of six hours, from midnight to 6 a.m., and it deals with these sort of very different characters who all sort of um, meet along the way on the, during this crazy night in Tokyo. And uh, it was absolutely amazing. I was surprised that a book this small could actually leave as much of an impact on me. He has a very... This was the first book by Murakami that I've actually read. Um, I have two other books by him. I have The Wind Up Bird Chronicle and Kafka on the Shore. I made the mistake of attempting to read The Wind Up Bird Chronicle um, first, which evidently from Murakami fans, everybody says is like the last book you want to start with when you start reading his books. So I was hopelessly confused and put it down. Um, but I decided to pick this one up and read it because it was so short. And I initially started to read it thinking that I was going to read a few pages and then put it down, and then I ended up reading the whole thing. But um, he has a very dreamlike quality to his books. I really like his sort of linear way of writing, and I enjoyed it, and I am planning on tackling <laughs> more of his work at some point. Um, just not the Wind Up Bird Chronicle right now. Maybe I'll start with Kafka on the Shore. But I love this book, and it's on my favorites of the year. So obviously I gave it five stars on Goodreads. So that's pretty much what I've read over the last like month or so as far as what I'm planning to read. And as you guys know, this probably will change by the time I do my um, next reading update video. But um, the three books that I've taken off of my TBR to show you um, are Torpedo Juice by Tim Dorsey. It is book seven. I'm hoping that if I give myself a little bit of time, I will be able to um, pick these books back up without having to take too much of a break. But yeah, I'm excited to read this. Um, next up is one that I possibly might start today because I've been excited to read it since I heard about it. And it is Out by Natsuo Kurino. I know that is not how you say her name and I apologize. But it is a crime novel about this group of women who, um, well, I'm not really sure. I just know it is a crime novel. Um, about these women and things sort of spiral out of control and I've seen some really great reviews of this book and I'm excited to find out exactly what it is about. And lastly, I plan on reading The Treatment by Mo Hader. This is the second book in the Jack Caffrey series. Um, I am trying really hard not to like keep going back to Mo Hader because I don't want to get into one of those situations where I read so many books by one author that I kind of get sick of them. But I've been really dying to read this since I finished Birdman, so I probably will pick this up later today. Okay guys, so that's it. This was my very long-winded um, <laughs> reading update video, and like I said, I'm going to attempt to do these on a more regular basis. I'm thinking, since I usually have Sundays and Mondays off from work, maybe I'll do them on the weekends. It might be easier for me. So until next time, you guys, if you have any questions about any of the books that I mentioned, just let me know, and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, thanks, guys, for watching, and happy reading.